Hi, today I want to talk a little bit about autocorrelations and if you have some financial time series and you want to, want to model that and you want to put in some autocorrelation, um, often you look at uh, concepts in books and it's kind of hard to understand what the real meaning of autocorrelation is. But the reality is it's actually really quite simple and if you just implement it in a few lines of Python code you will very quickly realize um, how easy it is and how easy it is to understand uh, what autocorrelation actually means. So um, let's just do that and let's just uh, build a really simple autocorrelation model uh, that we can really understand. So the first thing we need to do is we need to initialize some sort of um, return um, list um, which I do here uh, x equals a list which only has one entry uh, which is zero so the next step is uh, we uh, build a loop so um, we just use say a thousand entries and in that loop we append to our x and now this is the important step uh, we generate a random number in our case a normally distributed random number and we add to it uh, previous values of x multiplied by some factor so uh, what we do is we say so now in this case uh, our x is somehow correlated to um, the um, x from the previous value so we now here see we multiplied it by a arbitrary factor I give it 0 0.3 and you also see that we add that to our uh, previous value. So what we expect is a positive correlation of the value at time t to the value of time t minus 1. So let's do that. And then let's just um, plot our result. And what we really want is because these are our returns, we want a cumulative sum of x. And uh, we show that. Oops, and let's see what we get. So here you can see um, this is a positive autocorrelation. You see it's sort of, it's hard to tell, but it, it has actually a bit of a trending um, property. So I just want to show you another representation of what we just did. So to see that it's actually autocorrelated. So what we do is we plot all the values at time t versus the values at time t minus 1. So what we do is x, so that's a t minus 1, and then um, we go like this. So now, as you can see here, we plot the values, all the values at time t minus 1 versus the values at time t. Let's show that, and as you can see here, we don't actually see an awful lot of correlation. That's simply because perhaps we have uh, made that factor here a little bit small. So just for the sake of showing you how that works, let me increase that factor a little bit. Um, so let's just increase that to say 0 0.9 and then plot our autocorrelation. And you see here now it's a much better correlation and also let's see what we get when we just plot x and you can see here this is a very trending function okay so we can clearly see that there's quite a lot of trend behavior in this now um let's see what happens when we uh, instead of adding um, our previous value we subtract our previous value so for that we just need to initialize again zero okay and then we build our loop and instead of the plus you can see here we have a minus okay so let's run this um, let's plot first uh, our correlation function and we would expect that to go negative or to have a negative slope and that's clearly uh, visible here we have a negative slope we have a negative autocorrelation and now let's see what we expect for our time series with the cumulative sum and you can see here this is a lot more um, what you would call mean reverting so 
you can see here a lot of times it goes up and it jumps back to its similar previous value so the overall curve still has some trends in it but you see very clearly that this is much more um, mean reverting and then jumps back and forth um, so this is um, what you call a, a negative autocorrelation um, I hope that makes sense to you um, just uh, for the uh, demonstration I just want to show you what happens if we have not just one um, look back or if our autocorrelation is not just uh, correlated to the first previous value t minus 1 but also t minus 2 um, that's pretty simple as well we just have to initialize uh, two values first um, because when we start we have to look back two and then here we get our uh, loop again see we have um, I'll make that uh, positive just uh, because it's easier so here we have again x minus 1 but now what we do is we add something we say x minus 2 so it's the time at t minus 2 and let's say that time has not quite such a strong influence so we multiply it by 0 0.3 and we run that again and so what we do is um, we uh, plot this and you can see here is quite a strong uh, upward movement um, so whatever the values we've chosen are a little bit extreme um, so probably um, we need to use something that has a bit less impact so let's start again so let's make that perhaps um, let's do 0 0.2 and let's make this a little bit or much much smaller uh, at t minus 1 let's do it again and plot our x and as you can see here we have uh, two positive autocorrelations and if we want to um, visualize those autocorrelations uh, we need to do this so here we have uh, first of all our uh, autocorrelation at t minus 1 and because we have such a small value we probably won't see much of a correlation and you can see that here however at t minus 2 we will probably see something slightly more obvious and it's just it's not overly clearly visible but you can see here that there's a slight trend in the curve and as we increase the values that trend will obviously be much much stronger so um, if you want to um, have more autocorrelation uh, further back you can just simply add more um, um, factors to it and then just more lookbacks um, and so I hope uh, that makes uh, the idea of autocorrelation a little bit clearer to you um, if you're interested uh, per uh, perhaps look up uh, in Python the autocorrelation function so what that does is it basically gives you um, these factors that you can see here at each time step minus 1 minus 2 which you call the lags and you get then a nice chart with uh, bars that give you all the factors for the autocorrelation I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time thank you